They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in Farmer's Kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in Farmer's Kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Woods Equipment Company. Has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, your village shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, Hi. the outdoor version. Mm -hmm. We're outside. It's a mucky, Yay. nasty mess. Last time, our last show that we aired, and it was a week or two behind, it was single di digit temperatures. Yeah. Now it's almost 70 degrees. Isn't that nice? So when this airs, you'll think, yeah, that was last week. I remember that. Because it'll probably be another blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> There's supposed to be. Tuesday is supposed to be All another. Right. We're getting there, though. We're you shaved your beard, which means spring is here. That's absolutely going to make that yes. happen. Yes. You shaved yours. I've shaved mine. <laughs> <laughs> and we're good to go. All right. Here it is. That wasn't nice. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Here it is. Beautiful, almost 70 degree weather. But you know, the planting season is just around the corner. Something we want to do tonight is we're going to build a compost compost bin. Now, I remember when I was a kid, I would get ready to throw uh, a leftover salad in the trash or the eggshells or assorted this, that, or the other. Mom said, no, 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 that goes in the really? compost pile. Oh, See, she we had never a compost did that. Pile. That's neat. Now, what is a compost pile? Well, it's vegetation for the most part. It's, it's a kind of a, a fine mix of things that you have that eventually turn to that product which you put on the garden. Really? Which is your natural fertilizer. Now, we raise sheep. Obviously, a lot of people say, hey, I love your goats. These are sheep, these are Katahdins. Look up Katahdin, interesting breed. They're hair sheep. Now, supposedly, the goat's tail goes up, sheep are down. Now, okay. that's, that's that one way sense. that you can yeah. tell. Now, hair sheep, are sheep that you don't have to shear. They naturally shed their coats. I like that. So that's what kind of that's why we sheep that we have. Now, as we are having lambs, and you've seen Moo Moo and Michael <laughs> as of, as <laughs> nice of names. last week. Yeah. Um, the grandbabies name those. We have them inside the barn. Right. Well, while they're inside the barn on the straw, they're doing their business. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take their business and put it in the compost pile, the straw and the duty as well, that as we turn it over and mix it, what you want with a compost pile, it's a, almost a living, breathing science experiment. Hmm. So you have this dry and wet, green and brown, and you continue to turn that over. You also want it to be moist, so you're gonna check it out every now and then. You might have to spray a little water on it. You want it moist, but you don't want it soupy. So you have this blend of this stuff that's naturally rotting. So we take our leftover trash that we normally put in the trash, like celery or eggshells. So the wet stuff. Can the wet it. stuff. Now we don't obviously don't want to put like um, fish or something right. smelly to attract animals. This is all vegetation. Normally we should have had our bin going a long time ago. We're way overdue, but we're kind of learning with our garden that we want to kind of. You don't have to have as much space if you're smart about where you plant things and what you use for fertilizer. But while we're out and about, hopefully the rain won't be a pest today. We've got a hot pan over here. Here's what we're gonna do. Ribs. Yum. Ribs. 
I like ribs. On the Dutch oven. So today's cowboy cooking segment is easy ribs with a kick. As we travel and meet different people and they find different ways that they show us how to do things. Richard McAllister recently did a chicken. Mm -hmm. Remember that? He used the vegetables to actually stack the chicken on to good. create that airflow underneath it. The vegetables ended up absorbing the chicken fat and tasting absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. Everything was great. So today we're having real ribs. We're going to take these onions and we're going to cut them in half and we're going to actually use those as a little cooking rack to set the ribs on. Oh, good idea. Uh huh. So underneath that we're going to have some beer. I think we got a dark sweet beer. We're going to put underneath that to have that steam and all that stuff's cooking. You have the flavor of the beer, the flavor of the onions. We're going to take these ribs, we're going to peel off that bottom membrane with a paper towel like we do. Then we're going to take a little bit of mustard so it will hold our rub and we're going to put all over it and let it seal it a little bit too. Then we're going to take our favorite dry rub, one that I have made. Should I give them a recipe? Mm -mm, that's a secret. Ooh, that might be a secret. And our barbecue sauce, we're going to take that, set it on top of the onions, close her up. You remember the 350 degree combination? 17 on top and 8 on bottom. Very What good. do I win? You win a chance to help me build a compost bin. Wow. You're not going to feed me? I'll feed you eventually. Okay. But that's going to take a little while. Now what okay. we're going to do it's about two hours and 15 minutes. We're going to check these. Okay. Now I'm hoping the rain will hold off and I'm, the wind's not blowing too bad. We may have to replace some charcoal on there. Keep an eye on that. Now a lot of times when we get busy like this, we tend to just grab and go. We may even not have any sides with this. We may be total carnivores. We'll have onions. We got onions. We can eat some onions. All right. One more thing. In desserts of old, I remember grandma's cooking with molasses. Right. And we wanted to do a molasses related recipe because I remember having molasses cookies when I was mm -hmm. a kid. So you came up with this concoction called molasses coffee cake, correct? Yep. Oh my, the house just, smelled like, uh, it's like one of those candles. Yeah. It that smelled like too good to be true. So we can't eat it, we just smell it. Yeah, we're not going to eat that until you look the other way. Okay. So we're going to have that tonight as well. We're going to go in the cabin when it gets dark and we can't see anything and do anything else out here. But in the meantime, we're going to go start looking at some materials we got. We've got some leftover boards. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be any particular size. You may have a small garden. You may only plant with pots in your house. Speaking of that, this is a good time of year to start thinking about planting all kinds of things. We have on the front of our house, our house was designed to be a passive solar house. It has glass in the front. And it also has stonework in the back. When the sun is shining on that south facing part of the mm -hmm. house, those rocks stay warm. They used to give green tours out here at this home. It's very well designed. The guy who uh, actually designed this lives right up the road. Very smart individual. Yeah. Geothermal, the whole deal. But with that south facing, with those big windows, it's a perfect place to set some plants out. That's right. And keep a humidifier going in mm -hmm. there. Today we're going to show you how, just how simple it is. You see us in the summertime and in the springtime, and even now, right. when we want fresh rosemary or fresh basil or fresh oregano. Have now, we've own. picked it pretty hard up to this point, right? but it's time to start some more. Now, this year, we're probably going to start planting that stuff everywhere because we're using that more and more. Yeah, we are. You have your own stuff, and it's fresh and right in front of you. And you smell it. When you walk into the front there, and you smell so that good. stuff. Oh, it's like heaven. All right, you want to help me build a bin? I sure do. We'll no, learn. you don't. Okay. <laughs> The dogs don't like the sound of progress. No, they don't. <laughs> you know what? We have found some boards. This is not going to be a pretty job. Okay. It's not going to be square, but your measurements have to be exactly like this or it's not going to work. It has to be five feet, five inches long. Really? Because that's what you found? <laughs> These are the boards that I found that are part of an old fence that had to come down. So that's going to be the sides. Okay. Okay the slatted sides. You want air to be able to, to uh, circulate through this. So five feet, five inches. Okay, got it. That's going to be our size. You can build whatever size you want. The end is going to be the pallet. Slatted sides on the way up. It's going to set on the ground. 
And we've got our first load of compost right over there. It's really from big. today. Uh -huh. Instead of throwing that stuff in the garbage, it goes right in here. Now remember, you don't want animal parts in pieces where it's going to smell really nasty. You have raccoons right. and critters. So basically, vegetable matter, okay. grass clippings, dry, wet, okay. brown, green. You ready to help me get this thing started? I am. Let's do it. Okay. Now, as we go higher, I got another board out there I can cut up. Okay. But it's gonna take a while to get up to here. But eventually, we'll keep adding boards. I'm gonna leave that low on the front side. I'll probably go one more board at the most so I can reach him with my pitchfork and mix it up and move it around. Isn't it beautiful? It's really nice. You wanna have company over the sake and see our beautiful yeah. compost bin? Let's build another one, that was fun. The house is here, the garden's here, so when we're on our way down to the garden to drop off our compost stuff, it's right here. And then when we need to take stuff from here to the garden, it's right there. You're smart. Isn't it beautiful? It is beautiful. So basically we have two pallets and some junk wood, and in 15, 20 minutes we built a sort of a compost bin. It ain't beautiful, but it's iron. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. And as, like I say, once we start getting it up here and start getting a lot of grass clippings and things like that, we'll put more boards on until we get up to here. But I am going to leave that front side low again so we can get stuff in and out of it. How about going and visiting the animals, and I'll bring us our first load of duty. Good, you do that. I'll do that. All right, we talked about the sheep byproduct, sheep waste, reading up on that. Found out that that is not a hot type manure, meaning that it won't burn your plants. Almost immediately, you can take and use this stuff in your garden. And it's also good to put in the compost pile because it's not a real vile, it doesn't smell real bad. So being between the garden and the house, well, we don't want to be smelling a really obnoxious smell. So that's one good thing about sheep. If it was chicken or cow or something like that, you'd have a real problem. But sheep is relatively non-smelling. You know, I made a fort like this once when I was a kid. It just had a roof. I like it. It was fun. <laughs> you know, I, again, as we build, we're starting out slow. But here's what we're going to do. We've been, uh, we had a guy out cutting down our ash trees. They had to climb up and get the tops out because the ash borers have destroyed all our ash trees. So we've got all these little sticks. So we're going to put those in the bottom. We're going to spread those Can around. Dump them? The, yeah, if you, if you want to. We're going to dump those in here, spread those around. Here, I'll just get in there and kick them around. That'll kind of create this little base. Keep everything lifted up and create. What you want is little air pockets so all that stuff can get all comfy together. Then we're going to come back with our sheep dew. All right, now, the great thing about spring, well, I enjoy mowing. You enjoy mowing. I enjoy mowing. mowing. But you know, when, when it gets nice and thick and you've got all that leftover grass, guess what? We have food for our compost bin. Really? Now, here's what's your typical. I remember that looks like what mom used to throw in. And the most important thing there coffee is grounds. coffee grounds. But when we put it out here, we're wow. creating our briny goo that will eventually end up on the garden. Now, we just got started. We'll it smells delicious. <laughs> we got more boards to add as we need them. It's going to take a while, and I'm going to come out here when it gets warmer and it starts stewing, and the sun goes across the south. So it's on this most of the day. It's late in the day now. We've had a busy day. Yes, we have. What do you think? Are you excited about your compost bin? Mm -hmm. Let me it's see make, your excited look. It's making me hungry, but not for that, <laughs> for your ribs. Real? Well, you know what? The ribs, I checked on a minute ago. I put a couple more uh, briquettes on there. Oh, okay. They're looking pretty good. It's almost two hours. In about 15 minutes, we're going to check them. Okay. If they're falling apart, we're going to eat them. Everybody knows the girls were down. They named the sheep accordingly, Moo Moo and Ooh, Mikey. Michael. <laughs> I like so, Mikey. Mikey, Mikey's Mikey good. Mikey Moo Moo. Uh, but... It, the weather has been so wet and so nasty. Everything is just mud right now. We got mud yeah. all over us. Taryn ruined her boots. She ruined her boots, yeah. but they did want to go see the animals, so we took them out for a minute to see. Even Sammy got in on the action. Yes, he did. And he was well loved by the dogs. <laughs> Thank you.
been a long day. I was playing a couple oregano and a couple uh, basil. Okay. Now, we talked about that south facing. We're going to do that. These are just for in our house. That's good. We're going to plant one on one side and one on the other. These you just barely cover up. Now, these will germinate in eight to ten days. Oh. And then 90 days from now, hopefully, we'll be able to use it. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is this stuff grows and flourishes, hopefully. When that basil comes up and starts to flower at the top, take that flower off. Let it put all its all its efforts into the leaves. It makes me think about spaghetti when you plant all this. This is just to go inside. Later when it's nice, in summertime, we'll probably take this dish down on the patio. So when we need it, there it is. Yeah. And you can have these setting all over the place. If you use a right. lot of these like we do, but basically you can have a little garden with these things mm -hmm. in it. Just rosemary, all the things that you like, some lavender maybe, sage, whatever you use the most. Us, probably, it's basil, and oregano, rosemary, yeah. and cilantro. You think our hands are clean enough to Yeah, eat? let's eat. You know what, it's about time to check those. Let's get washed up a bit, take that and set it down in the atrium, and let's check our ribs. Dig? I do. Smell anything? It smells good. What'd you How you like your ribs? Falling off the bone. I promise you, with all that moisture in there, with all those onions, all the moisture, all the convection cooking, that these will fall off the bone. Did you peek? Nope. Really? I just know. Okay. Two hours and 20 minutes, roughly. Okay. You ready? Can we eat? You want a little barbecue sauce on yours? Yeah, I do. Out? I do. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over here, pull the top up. Okay. I'm going to grab these. I'm going to put them on this plate, and we're going to chow. All righty. Dig? Uh, sounds good. All right, you ready for this? I am. Oh, wow. Wow. Ooh, we need the onion, too. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, my goodness. Now, I've got to get over the whole thing here. Why? Because they'll fall apart if I don't. Perfect. There's no doubt about these. Those are look delicious. Done. Now. Mmm. What about an onion? I want an onion. How about a couple onions? Those onions are falling apart. <laughs> oh, that looks good. You think it's worth eating? Oh, I better try it. You probably shouldn't try it. Yeah, I'll probably just watch you. Okay. Look at here. Did you hear me say wow. that thing about the falling apart? What's this? Oh, goodness. Look at that. It's mm. falling apart. That's what you want. You don't even need a knife. Look at that. It's just coming apart. Wow. Look at that bone just fall out. Can I try it? You can. Good. <laughs> well, you know, they're going to be moist. Look at that. Look wow. how moist they are. They're going to be moist from all that moisture in there. Oh, wow. Delicious. It's amazing. <laughs> Best ribs? Mm-hmm. The onion's amazing. Try the onion. It's very hot, though. Be careful. That's not an onion. That's our shelf. Oh, okay. The shelf you made is delicious. Is that good or? Oh, wow. Wow. No dry ribs here. You outdid yourself. These are really good. Those might be, I fixed a lot of ribs a lot of different ways and smokers, this, that, and the other. Those might be my favorite ribs. These are the best I've ever had. Good job. Look at you, you know what? Now, even though I could eat every bit of this, I'm going to save a little bit of room for your molasses coffee cake. You always have room for dessert. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. That, that really has coffee in it, right? Yeah, that's coffee. So it's really a coffee cake. Yes, it is. <laughs> so you like the ribs? Uh, they were delicious. They were so moist. They were falling apart. I hate to get ribs. Not too long ago, I went to a restaurant, and it, you actually had to... Yeah. Rip it off the bone. It was dry as it could be. If you try them this way, so simple. I promise you they will be the moist, most moist ribs you've ever had. The bones are just falling right out of them. We ate every piece of that. Is oh. moistest a word? Moistest or if you want moist, anything moist. you want it to be a word. Most moist, I'd say, would be okay. appropriate. Okay. Now, speaking of moist and wonderful, this is wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. I know because you made it the other day. I always need dessert. What do you call it again? I call this molasses cupcake. And it actually has coffee in it. Yeah, it does. That's what makes Let's it so make good. It. All right. How long does it take? 
Uh, 25 minutes. And you actually put icing right over it and eat it immediately. We so want to preheat our oven to? 350. 350. So we got it going for 350. Let's do this. All one. right, and here's what we're going to do. And of course, got to have an egg. Our chickens are laying eggs. Yes, they are. We're getting ready to gather some eggs because um, our roosters are doing their job. Yes, they are. So they should be fertile eggs. All right, got our lard our again. Lard. And you know what? This is the last no. container. Yes, it is. Say it isn't true. I know, and I need about an eighth of a cup of lard. I just kind of okay. eyeballed it and scooped it in there with our wonderful lard. And we're also going to use some butter. Gonna mix butter it up. Butter and lard. That's right. That makes it good, about an eighth of a cup. And now we're going to do a quarter cup of sugar. And then the secret, one of the secret ingredients, molasses. Molasses. About a quarter cup. This is cup. molasses coffee cake. Yes, it is, because I'm going to do about a quarter cup. You know what? That's an old-fashioned thing. Folks used to use it in a lot of recipes. All right, there's one more ingredient, coffee. Coffee. Yes, and this is actually still a little bit warm, and we're gonna put three tablespoons of coffee. And I'm gonna mix this with the mixer, kind of cream it up a little. Right, we still got our little butter chunks and lard, but that's fine, that's good. All right, now we're gonna do our powdered mixture which is a three quarter cup of flour. That's a quarter, so here's a half a teaspoon of baking powder. All right. And we also need half a teaspoon of salt and an eighth of soda, a half a teaspoon of the cinnamon I also. I love cinnamon. I like cinnamon. I do too. Greeks like the cinnamon. My grandfather put cinnamon in everything he made. And now some cloves. And we're gonna put a quarter teaspoon of cloves. If you wanna go ahead and dump that in for me. Whole thing? Yep. Almost making like a little cake. Smell that? Again, the lard in any kind of pastry or baking, it just does something magic, doesn't it? Yes, it does. That's it. Doesn't it smell good? Oh, yeah. Now, when that gets to bacon, I'm telling you what, it's like, it's like the best smell. It's like one of those candles you get. It just, mmm. Yes, it is. Now we're going to put it in this baking dish. And let's go ahead and put some butter in this baking dish. Beautiful. We need some butter. Since we've got our oil back at the house. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm just putting it in this, this small dish. This is enough. So if you want to put it in a 9 by 13, you could double it. But we're going to do just for me and you because this is all you need, right? This rises up pretty nice. Oh, yeah. It raises a lot. But you made some kind of icing. What was the icing deal? I put in a quarter a cup of butter and one cup of powdered sugar. I add a tablespoon of coffee. And then if it looks like it needs to thin out a little to your liking, I put up to between one and two tablespoons of coffee. So it gives it kind of that coffee icing That's it? flavor. Yes. And as soon as this comes out of the oven, we're gonna go ahead. Put that little bit of icing. We're gonna put the icing right on it while it's warm so it kind of just hardens right on there. Is it ready to go? It's ready to go. 25 right. minutes and it's done. Let's do this. All right, so how long? 25 minutes? 25 minutes. Let's clean this mess up and I know we gotta do some more stuff outside and then I'll make sure that cake comes out. All right, you put the icing on it for me? Yep. Just mix the icing up like I told you, put it on the top. All right. And then just let it sit and let me know when it's done and after I clean up out there, we'll eat. Gotcha. So you finished my cake, did you? I uh -huh. started it. What's this? You had a little bite? Do you like it? How was it? You did good on the icing, too. Icing's easy. Okay. I like that icing, too, by the way. So you're just going to cut this and make like little bars squares. out of it. Yeah, we'll make little bars, like little pieces of cake, so you could pick it up if you wanted. Or This is how you're supposed to serve it before you eat it right out of the dish. Mm, 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 I'm sorry. I could not help myself. It's all right. That's really, really good. That's delicious. It's got, it's got just, the, the only way I can say it is it's old fashioned. Yeah, it is. Because people used to use molasses in their cookies and things like that. That's delicious, Mrs. Farmer. Thank you, I'm glad you liked it. So we did get a lot accomplished. Yes, we did. But one more thing you guys need to accomplish is check out our Facebook page, like it, see where we're going, what we're doing, a lot of cool things coming up. Also, check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. If you want to show us, click on YouTube. We have hundreds and hundreds of segments you can look at there. And recipes by the bushel. Yes, there are. Lots of them. And at this point, it's sad. Yes, it is. But it is time 
to realize that it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. We'll see you next week for a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean, careful craftsmanship, continual improvement. Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987. So Jill, I know the markets have taken a hit lately. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to touch base. How did Edward Jones come to manage over $800 billion in assets? Here's our latest market outlook. And there are two things that I'd like to point out. So that's interesting. You know, we had spoken about that before. Through FaceTime, when you really need it. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing.